In this video, we're going to make a voltage doubler. It's mainly with this capacitor, but this capacitor catches the voltage and stores it for a load. So if you saw my last video, we put the load directly to that capacitor and we had a bunch of pulses basically. So in any case, we'll double the voltage with the capacitor. We're going to look at how to do that with this circuit. So as you can see here, we have a couple of diodes in series. These are rectifier diodes. So they control the uh, current direction. Oh, by the way, we're going to have, we got the VCC, the supply rail. We'll have two times VCC out minus a couple diode drops. So it'll probably be about a volt and a half less than the supply voltage. And here's the circuitry. It's uh, really simple. So we should use a digital switch that goes from rail to rail. I do have a 555 timer that goes rail to rail. It costs a lot more than the regular ones, but in this video I'm just going to use a jumper to connect directly to the rails because it's just for demonstrations. So you can see here the anode of that diode connects to VCC and then the cathode connects to the anode there and then the uh, cathode of that one heads to ground and then ground through the load. But uh, we won't uh, encounter that. Well, we will later on. I will add a load. So it's kind of hard to see these with the light. Hopefully you can see that there's a gray stripe right there and a gray stripe right there. They don't show up on camera terribly well, uh, the gray stripe. So there we go. Gray stripes to the right for both of these. This comes to the positive rail. So that current when you think of conventional current, can move along that way uh, almost freely. There's a little bit of a diode drop. Now, the first capacitor. The positive side goes to where those two diodes connect. So we're going to use a 470 microfarad. Value does not matter at all. The larger the value, though, the more energy it will store. More charges will fill it up. But it charges instantly when uh, we charge it. We'll look at that later. So the positive side goes to where the diodes connect. The negative side of the capacitor, it's polarized. It can only accept charge in one direction. So there you can see we got positive. That's why we want the positive there. Sometimes this will go to negative. Sometimes it'll go to positive. When this side's to positive, so is that side. And so we don't reverse charge it. We just discharge it. Now, so we'll come back to the jumper later on. So now we got this diode and that diode heads over to this capacitor right there and uh, so again I'm going to use a 470 microfarad capacitor so this is going to capture those uh, charges from the capacitor and also from the power supply they're going to double up is, is what's going to happen so I need the uh, positive side where the cathode so there's a gray stripe there even though we can't see it on camera so that's the positive side so I need to put the capacitor to the negative rail. So we're out of the way there. So instead of working our way down, we're working our way up, but we're still going to ground. Doesn't matter. Schematics just tell you the connections. They don't tell you how to lay it out on a breadboard. So that is it. It's literally that simple. We got positive coming to the positive side of that capacitor. Right now it's floating. We will fix that. And then also current can go through that down to uh, fill it up. That capacitor. So that capacitor is actually Five volts right now so you can see we got five volts at the uh, power supply right there and uh, no currents flowing right now let's get that light off of there and uh, actually you can maybe see the uh, gray stripes like that when I move the light right there yeah you can see them better so we have that now we're going to take the uh, green jumper and put that to the negative side of this capacitor So I have the oscilloscope, the alligator clips come from that cable. The black one's already at the ground. The red one here we have just on a blank rail. So we will look at the uh, voltage of this capacitor right now. And then you can see each square is one volt. So one, two, three, four, and about a diode drop below uh, five. Because we're dealing with a five volt power supply. Now I'm going to uh, charge this capacitor if it isn't already and then 
we actually put it in series with the power supply and there you can see the voltage went up and the voltage went up again each time I did it because there's no load this is going to trickle a little current through it over time the voltage will go down I'm going to change this to 2 volts per division but you can see the voltage went up so we got a 5 volt power supply now we got 2, 4, 6, 8 volts where this capacitor is so we consider this our output once we attach a load and so I will do this again we'll see where we top off we're making a little bit more progress so what happens is we have positive filling that up when I charge this up this side becomes more positive that side becomes more negative which I'm doing right now when I attach this to more positive now we got positive coming to negative and then positive going over to this capacitor other side is negative so we put these in series and uh, so we got the 5 volt power supply plus whatever voltage this capacitor is as long as it can provide current and so we charge this to almost 5 volts so we got about double the voltage that's the main takeaway now we will add an LED so I'm going to use a 10,000 ohm resistor my first demonstration video I only used a 1 kilo ohm resistor and it drew too much current these green LEDs though are really bright and so a 10,000 ohm resistor should work just fine remember the long lead the anode has to be towards the more positive side short lead the cathode that goes right to ground there it's pretty obvious that's the more negative side so I'll plug that in and you can see it's lit up and you can see the voltage there is dropping right now so we have to continuously switch this back and forth so you would use like a 555 timer or something but it should go all the way to the rail unless you're going to account for because they don't go all the way to the positive rail most of the common ones the NE555 but there you can see we're holding 8 volts kind of well if we did this really fast it would hold it uh, better so we boosted it we're well above the 5 volts at all times and if we use more capacitance it would work better if we drew less current it would work better there's ways to improve this but uh, still I think that's plenty fine for demonstration purposes right there for how that works and uh, it's really simple we'll look at the schematic one more time and I will pop up some videos make sure you check out uh, one of the other videos that I post and also click subscribe the bell and uh, so you get notified of new videos and whatnot. Uh, I mostly count on people watching YouTube videos, so I'm adding a little time to this because uh, I showed this schematic briefly. But uh, in any case, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.